and welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome to Morocco. I've just driven my Ferrari 360 two and a half thousand kilometers to get here. Why? Why not? I bought this car seven years ago, financed by the legends at Magnitude Finance, and I vowed on the day that I collected it that I would use this Ferrari in a way that I think all Ferraris should be used, for adventures. And last year was this car's 20th birthday and we did a lot of adventures, but it's not going to stop there. Moving forward, I want to use this car for the big journeys, taking it to places that I think all us petrol heads dream of taking our cars. And that starts in this video because I'm taking this car to the Sahara Desert. Let's go. Well, in a potentially unsurprising move for many of my viewers, you find me starting this adventure on the Eurotunnel. Now there are actually quite a few different ways that you can drive from the UK to Morocco, but they pretty much all require you to head south, either to the south of Spain, the south of France, or Italy, because those are the places where the various ferries depart from. Now I've chosen the south of Spain, and specifically Tarifa, because that's the shortest ferry crossing. Last year, I had a fairly interesting long ferry crossing. In this car, from the south of Spain. It was to Tenerife, and after that journey, I vowed to never do it again. So yes, when planning this adventure, I was like, what's the shortest ferry journey to Morocco? Now, I could have taken a ferry from the UK to the north of Spain and reduced my driving time down to Tarifa. But, well, firstly, the logistics didn't quite work out, and secondly, I haven't really driven this car for like six months, so I'm quite keen to put some miles on it to loosen everything up before I head to the desert. So yeah, right now I'm on the Eurotunnel crossing into France, I then head south over the Pyrenees and then down through Spain to just south of Seville and yes, the port town of Tarifa. It's, it's a long journey, it's going to be a lot of miles and a lot of driving, but you know that's not something I'm really afraid of, especially in this car, and I'm fairly certain it's all going to be worth it once we get into the desert. Well, I'm happy to report it's been a very positive start to this trip. I've already got a thousand kilometers under my belt. I'm halfway to Morocco. I've made my way all the way through France to the Pyrenees, the mountain range that separates France and Spain. And I'm now arriving at my fairly unique overnight accommodation. <laughs> this place looks insane. This is Le Cabane de Pyrene. I'm sure I'm butchering that pronunciation, but essentially, cabins in the Pyrenees. It's a tree house. I'm staying in a tree house tonight. Some of you might be asking why, and actually, I realize some of you might also be asking, why am I taking my 360 to Morocco? Adventure for adventure's sake. But there are two specific inspirations for this particular journey. Uh, first off, I have to mention Harry Metcalf, Harry's garage, and his journey to the Sahara Desert with his Ferrari Testarossa. I remember watching that video just thinking, that looks super cool. But more so than that, about a year ago, I went to Morocco and the Sahara Desert with Nissan to test drive a kind of one-off rally-inspired Duke that they'd created. It was an amazing adventure, and sadly not many of you managed to see the video, but during my time in Morocco, I thought, this would be a really cool place to bring a cool car, like my 360. And with my aim to now use my Ferrari for the big, wild, crazy adventures, there didn't seem much wilder or crazier than, yeah, driving it onto the African continent for the first time and to the desert. Anyway, I'm gonna settle in to my treehouse, explore it a little bit more, try not to get scared by the wildlife, and then get some shut-eye before we continue south down to the bottom of Spain towards our ferry to Morocco tomorrow. Woken me up. I gotta be honest, 
didn't sleep that well last night. As cool as that treehouse was, the minute the sun went down, it was like a wild gang of squirrels was trying to break in and rob me for everything I was worth. And every insect and creepy crawly just seemed to want to get to bed with me. It, just, it was all a little bit unsettling. But anyway, I've woken up to another beautiful day. I've just crossed the border into Spain. I've got this awesome route this morning across the Pyrenees before I then head across Spain, south towards the ferry to Morocco. Uh, before I get there, I thought I would stop and talk you through some changes that we made to this car in preparation for this big adventure. Now, when I first told Aldous from AV Engineering, the legend who regularly maintains my car, about this trip, he had two major concerns. Firstly, what are the roads going to be like? Will they be paved? Will they be unpaved? I didn't really have an answer for him. A lot of Morocco's roads are paved, but a lot of them aren't, especially those closer to the desert. And even those roads that are paved do sometimes have unpredictably unpaved sections, or just huge craters, or potholes, or roadworks, etc. His second area of concern was heat, because it's the middle of May, and in some parts of Morocco right now, it's 40 degrees Celsius. And that's hot, that's pretty damn hot for a 20 year old Ferrari. So, Aldous, the legend that he is, put together, well, an action list. Things that he believed we need to change on my car to kind of try and ensure that it survives the journey. So, first things first, we raised the ride height. This car is now sitting 10 mil higher than standard. That should give us some extra ground clearance if I do end up going kind of off-road, but should also help getting on and off the ferry, because I know from experience, taking a 360 on and off a ferry can, can be difficult, can, can be tricky. Secondly, Aldous reinforced the floor. Uh, it's quite a flimsy floor on the 360, and so he just added some metal plates, meaning that if we do come across big rocks or anything like that, I should be a little bit more protected than usual. We've installed some front and rear tow hooks, just in case I venture into the sand dunes and, and go a little bit too far. And we've switched out the tyres. These are Pirelli Cintorato P7s. Now, these are still very much road tyres, but they should give us a little bit more durability than the tyres I was running beforehand. They've got a little bit of a knobblier tyre pattern, um, but because it's going to be so hot, we couldn't really fit winter tyres or off-road tyres, especially because I'm doing basically 2,000 kilometres down to Morocco. Uh, they would have burnt out super quickly. So yeah, these are still giving pretty good on-road performance, but should just help, as I say, with the slightly dustier sections and should withstand sort of rocks and pebbles and things like that a bit better. So that's the sort of potentially dodgy road surface dilemma addressed. Let's move on to addressing potential heat issues. So first things first, the engine's actually now running a much more aggressive and higher quality oil. It's actually a racing oil, which should again help to, well, protect the engine at higher temperatures. Over and above that, Aulis installed a very clever oil cooling system. He essentially installed a little fan from an, from an ATV or a quad bike just in here, which is where the oil cooling takes place. Usually, oil for the 360 is cooled by cold air or air passing through this vent here, but that requires the car to be moving and the air to be relatively cool. Because I'm thinking that at times we're going to be doing quite low speeds in high temperatures, well, we were concerned that, yeah, we wouldn't be getting enough air. So he's installed this little tiny fan just behind this grill here, which will just help suck the air. It's got an auxiliary switch inside the cabin just behind the driver's seat so I can switch it on and off whilst keeping an eye on the oil temperature gauge. And then finally, I've got some spare cabin and air filters to install after being to the desert to ensure that the, the car, and I guess me, is still breathing nice, clean, fresh air. So yeah, there's the screwdriver in the toolkit in the front bonnet. It's a super simple procedure just to swap these out. And as I say, just to make sure there's no sand, uh, grime clogging up my filters. I think that's everything. I feel like I've covered off all the points. Uh, important to say, all of these changes are temporary. As soon as the car's safely back in the UK, uh, everything will, well, go back to how it was before. It's just about trying to prepare ourselves as much as possible for, well, yeah, pushing this car not to the limits, but testing it in a, in a strange way. Uh, anyway, we've still got another thousand kilometers or so to do through Spain towards this ferry. So let's crack on. Good morning. 
this is it. I'm heading to the ferry to cross into Morocco and onto the African continent in my Ferrari. So far, so good. It's been a super pleasant experience so far. Getting on the ferry was super straightforward. No extremely vertical ramps like last time. The team downstairs was super helpful. I got loads of space. Did you notice there was DBS also getting on board? So clearly I'm not the only nice car heading to Morocco. Uh, I've actually met the owner, he's a guy called Mo. Super nice, apparently got quite a few cars and he's basically helping me through this experience. But yeah, the ferry's awesome. It's got great coffee, loads of snacks. I've met like three or four really nice people already. Everyone's very chatty. So yeah, all of my fears about ferry crossings in the 360s kind of dissipating. Well, boys and girls, welcome to Morocco. How cool is this? Um, I wasn't able to film getting off the ferry and going through customs for, for various reasons, mainly security reasons. Uh, the officers there weren't too happy with me uh, throwing cameras in their faces. Uh, but to update you, for those of you that might be interested in repeating or doing this journey yourselves, uh, the ferry was actually delayed in the end by about 45 minutes, but was was super straightforward. It's really quick ferry, which meant that the ride is quite rough. A few people getting a little bit seasick. Um, what's super useful is that the passport control is actually on the boat. Uh, so that kind of removes one potential hazard when you land. Uh, and then customs was super easy. Uh, all the officers were actually really nice and really friendly and loved the car. I handed them my V5, my vehicle logbook from the UK and my passport. Five minutes later they did a little quick search and then yeah, on my way. And here I am, released into Morocco and into Tangier. I'm not going to be passing through this place. I have heard very good things. But yeah, I'm heading to Fez. Fez is my first stop on this adventure. Now the only thing which I've been given, or I've been told, not only by people in advance of this trip, but also upon arrival, is drive slowly. They are super hot on speeding here, and they aren't very amused by it, which no one should be. So uh, yeah, just take it easy. You're probably gonna attract quite a lot of attention in a red Ferrari, so yeah. Now the adventure has truly begun. A toll. I didn't think there were going to be tolls and I've got no cash. Okay, I've pushed the problem down the road because it's, it's just take a ticket for now. So I guess we'll be paying later. Well, I'm off the motorway. I couldn't tell you where I am. I'm not in Fez. This is just a town that I'm passing through. Um, the toll booth did not accept credit cards. <laughs> but luckily there was a man there, a very helpful man. He said that he was very willing to take my euros off me. Um, I did say, how, how many euros? And he seemed to pluck a figure out of the air, but it was only five euros, so I was more than happy to give it to him. Um, but I think that maybe he did rather better out of that situation than me. Um, but yeah, look at this. Oh, there's some very nice looking bread. Oh, that bread looks amazing. Do I stop for the bread? Oh, we still got a long way to go. I shouldn't get too distracted. For me though, this is the best part about exploring by car, especially somewhere new or different. You don't see any of this if you're flying. And as I say, like, I, I couldn't tell you whether this is like a top tourist destination or not, but it seems cool. And as I say, that, that bread looked amazing. And here we go. Here's a horse and cart. Not sure what he's doing, but it's, this, is, this is Morocco. I'm exploring. It's absolute yes. Still got three hours to the hotel, so uh, yeah, keep my head down. Plenty more to see. I'm, I'm actually very happy we're off the motorway. Well, I'm about nearly 45 minutes away from the hotel now, and the roads are starting to get a little bit testing. Uh, we're definitely not off-road, but 
yeah, things are just a little bit more unpredictable. Big craters, big crevices, some unpaved sections. I've just had to really slow the pace down and take it easy. It's obviously given me a chance to test out the various changes we've made to the car before tomorrow I go further towards the desert. Um, but yeah, it's, it's also a bit unnerving. I mean, the car seems absolutely fine. Temperatures seem all right. We haven't gone much higher than 30 degrees outside, so I haven't got huge room for concern there. Um, but yeah, it all looks fine and then suddenly the road just kind of disappears or veers off to the left or there's a big crater. Here we go, look at this. What are we gonna do here? So, the paved section disappears for a while. Just gotta find the sort of smoothest route through really, which I think I'm gonna go for oh, here. Let's take it real slow and easy. Watch out for any big rocks and then out we come. People do think I'm mad, but uh, yeah, this insane, say American-esque scenery just continues. Mind-boggling. But fingers crossed I'll survive these bumpy roads and we'll make it to Fez and the hotel in one safe piece. Well, I've made it to Fez. I've survived day one in Morocco with my 360. What an epic first day it's been. Honestly, I feel like I've seen an entire side of this country I may never have known existed if I hadn't done this trip. You know what I love about Morocco is the people. Everywhere I've gone today, the people have been smiling and friendly and waving and wanting to chat. It generally feels like there are police everywhere. I've been stopped a couple of times, but we need to have a, have a chat. They're like, where are you from? This car's cool, where are you going? Like, they're just so nice. Makes me really excited for tomorrow, my adventure into the desert, and the days ahead, because I haven't even mentioned the fact the desert is not the only reason why I've brought the 360 to Morocco. More on that soon. But before I sort of finish up today, uh, let me just give a quick shout out to Magnitude Finance, who've made this epic adventure possible. But if you think about it, and you're a long-term viewer of the channel, you'll know they've made so many epic adventures possible because, well, the first car I financed with them was the Alpha 4C right at the start of Seeing Through Glass, and then pretty much every car that I've owned on the channel since then has been financed through Magnitude. So all the adventures, all the epic journeys have really been facilitated or, or made possible by them. So if you're sitting at home watching this going, oh, I wanna go on a trip like that in my car, or more importantly, I wanna get a car to go on a trip like that, well head over, jump on the Magnitude Finance finance calculator, work out what's in your budget, and go and get something, because honestly, it's doing stuff like this for me, it's a dream come true. Anyway, it's not even four o'clock yet, and I've arrived here at the Palais Farage Hotel, which is a hotel and spa. So I think I'm gonna go check out the spa, and then I'll see you tomorrow morning for our adventure to the desert. Well, good morning. Welcome to the big day. Uh, by the way, I had a great stay in that hotel last night, Palais Farage in Fez, super nice. Really nice, actually. Um, but I've left there now. I've just filled up with fuel, which was a little bit expensive, actually. Around £87 for three quarters of a tank. It wasn't even sort of juicy V power. It's just bog standard, bog standard fuel. But anyway, I got a full tank because, yes, it is a six hour and 20 minute drive to our destination, which is just outside Erfurt, which is on the edge of the Sahara Desert. Now, I think today's route is going to see us on fairly big roads, not like the twisty stuff we were doing yesterday, at least that's what I think. So really, my only sort of anxiety is around the heat. We're expecting temperatures of 38, 39 degrees Celsius today. It's, it's hot and it's a, it's a real heat. It's different to like a UK 38. This feels like it's going to fry you. So I just gotta keep an eye on the temperatures of the car, try and keep things moving, hopefully keep some air, even if it's not cool air, passing through that engine bay and keeping all the temps down. So yeah, I'm sure it will be fine, but it's just playing on my mind ever so slightly. Anyway, I'm making my way out of Fez now, and yes, we've got this, this big old pilgrimage now to the desert. I don't know what's gonna be ahead of us, but obviously you're coming along with me for this final part of this epic journey.
un peu de bon anglais. Un peu, un peu. Un uh, uh, foot. Un uh, foot. Merci beaucoup. I think I got a little bit lucky there. <laughs> there was a policeman with a speed gun, but I spotted him far enough in advance that I could, I could drop my speed accordingly. Not that I was going that fast with the, with the constant police checks and still some unpredictability on the roads, goats, sheep, slow moving traffic, etc. Yeah, you can't really push on that fast, but boy do these roads want me to. I was not expecting this today. I wish I knew exactly where I was. All I can tell you that this is the N4. It's like a proper, mountain pass I'm absolutely blown away and the scenery I mean yesterday was dramatic today's dramatic for a whole nother reason the views are insane I guess this could be part of the Atlas Mountains but I kind of assumed they were a bit more central we're very far east today you've yeah, got these big gorges and these open plains lots of hills and crests and I say proper mountains and the road is just fantastic also I might be keeping my wits around me for well yeah other things police, donkeys, etc. I, I don't have to worry about the tarmac because it's just been silky smooth. It's really, really imploring me to, to drive quite exhilaratingly. I'm just, I'm just trying to control myself and really take in the scenery more than anything else. And the temperatures haven't been that bad because we're pretty high, we're kind of still in the, well, the early mid twenties. So it's all pretty bearable. I'm absolutely loving life. I was excited about today, but not because I knew we were going to be doing this. Now I'm just like, I don't want to get to the desert. I want to keep having fun up here. and girls just like that well, well not really just like that two and a half thousand kilometers later the desert yep I have arrived at the edge of the Sahara Desert I can see sand dunes just on the horizon actually there are some just there I haven't actually quite made it to my destination yet but this is it we are, we are here we, we, we've made it and what a journey it has been the variety of scenery has just been nuts. This country is ridiculous. But all I really want to do now is, is get over to that sand. So I've got to find myself a pathway that, yeah, leads me into the dunes. This could be a disaster. I'm so nearly at my hotel. I may never make it there, but it'll be worth it for the Instagram content. This is literally the scene that I dreamed of. This whole trip has worked out so much better than I could ever have hoped. I could stare at that site, well, until the sun goes down, which is soon-ish. I kind of wish I had a cold beer, just to be able to drink this all in. What a moment. I, it might seem weird to you all, but seeing my car in this setting is just so cool in my mind. I kind of wish it was a little bit higher and had proper off-road tires and I could just launch over those sand dunes across the Sahara Desert and through Africa. Maybe that's a future adventure. But yeah, huge thanks to Magnitude Finance for making this all possible. Got to give a shout out as well to AV Engineering for preparing this car. Turns out a lot of the preparations weren't actually needed. Didn't get that hot today. I think the hottest I saw was like 35 or 36. Okay, the increased ride heights definitely helped. The tires potentially, but haven't needed the toe eyes yet. <laughs> um, 
and I don't know, it just, it just feels like I could have, could have got here with the car in fairly standard setup, and that is a testament to this 360, which just continues to just eat up every single challenge I throw at it. If you ever needed a reminder, once again, to go and get a modern classic, and a modern classic Ferrari, and use it, there you go. It's at the Sahara Desert in Morocco, on the continent of Africa, and it drove here from London a few days ago. Absolutely brilliant. Now, I mentioned it a short while ago, I've really fallen in love with this place over the last few days, and that's a good thing, because the adventure does not end here. There's another big reason as to why I bought this car to this part of the world, and that will all become clear in the next video. So subscribe now, turn on notifications so you don't miss out, and I guess I'll see you, yeah, next time, back here in Morocco, when I can't promise sand, but I can promise more epicness. Adios.